So this is for you, Dr. Jensen. Um, Herman Mays says most of the Y chromosome differences are errors and not mutations. And what Jensen is measuring here are errors between fathers and sons, not mutations. So he's asking. Yes. You to that. Let me let me I'm going to share my screen again here real fast because um, I'll give a short answer here and there'll be an answer coming in the <laughs> coming weeks. I've got a We've got a video series we've started here. This is the. Answers in Genesis, I guess I got to scroll down here. Here we go. Answers in Genesis YouTube channel. So if you just find the Answers in Genesis YouTube channel, I'll, I'll click on it here so we can watch it, uh, how you do this. You go here, this is the homepage for AIG then. You click on playlists. And one of the first playlists as of right now is this traced DNA's big surprise. That's where you can find subsequent videos. We released about six, which corresponded with the uh, competing with myself, with Simon Turpin talking. <laughs> anyway, we've released about uh, six videos when we had the initial uh, release of the, the print version. We're going to release, uh, we've already recorded about four more dealing with subsequent chapters in this book. Uh, and then, so that'll bring us up to about 10 videos. So you, again, that's how you find this video series. Bring us up to about 10 videos. Then we'll have about five videos of the science behind Traced, which... Here's the backstory to how we got where we are. Here's the decade of creation research that's led to where we are. This, this sequence of predictions, fulfillments, predictions, fulfillments, which is what evolutionists have demanded for 40 years, which just comes from the basic philosophy of science, which creationists are delivering and now exceeding what evolutionists have been able to do. And then we'll have probably three, two or three, maybe four, depending on how many more critics respond, <laughs> responses to specific criticisms of which this is one. So that's why I gave the backstory. Now, the short answer. What... Uh, What's one of the lines of evidence at the heart of this book is the, so again, let me, let me back up and set the scientific context. The primary tool that we're using to investigate human history in this book is the Y chromosome, the male inherited DNA passed on from fathers to sons. And the question is how fast or slow does that occur? Mutations occur. It acts like a biological clock. And so if the clock is ticking fast, too fast for evolution, there you have an anti-evolutionary argument and perhaps also a procreation argument. The way you do this experiment, and it's been done multiple times, is you get the DNA sequence of fathers, you get it of sons, you just count the number of differences, and then that gives you the rate of mutations per generation. So that's that's step one. You've got your rate. And really the, the, the equation we'll end up using is a form of a basic high school equation. Distance equals rate times time, or genetic differences equals rate times time. We've got the rate, the time you can uh, insert from evolution, from creation, say, okay, given the rate of change, how fast or how many differences will we get in, in 6,000 years? How many differences in 200,000 years according to evolution? And then you compare it to what we actually know. And here I can, I realize I can share my screen again to bring up a paper that I published along these lines where I went through the evolutionary literature where this has been done. There's, there's actually um, a whole backstory to this where the evolutionists have measured this. There's high quality studies, low quality studies. And uh, pull up my screen again here. <laughs> Truth is stranger than fiction. The evolutionists have, so here's the paper. You can find it at our website, answersresearchjournal.org. There's a key table I'm gonna pull up for you here. The evolutionists literally filtered out data that did not agree with their conclusions. I said I would give a short answer, but this is getting longer. It's because there's I find so it much crazy stuff that happens. Such a thing. I What's just, that? I, I can't believe they would do such a thing. They're so honest and not motivated by agenda. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised. I guess having worked with your average, I guess, secular scientist in graduate school. I guess my view is these people aren't dumb, and. I don't think they view themselves as we've got to protect this idea. It's just that's all people know. That's all the mainstream community is taught. So there is no alternative that they know of. So we already know from archaeology, geology, evolution's true. Here's the time scale. And so if we find something in genetics that contradicts it. Well, we must be wrong. And you can find so that another relevant quote here, I think, from the there's a, there was a project called the 1000 Genomes Project where they sampled thousands of DNA from thousands of people around the globe. This study included about 1,200 men. 
2016 paper in Nature Genetics, where they look at the Y chromosomes from these 1,200 men. And they say in the supplemental methods that one of the ways, one of the checks on their research was to look at the Native American Y chromosomes and to look when they branched off from Asian Y chromosomes. And they basically say, if it comes out to 15,000 years ago, this is, they, they use the term sanity check. How do we know that we're on the right track? Our sanity check is to see if it lines up with what we know from archaeology and geology. And, and, and that's how they do it. Okay. So this is one of the key tables from the paper. This will lead now. This is, again, sort of long backstory to the specific question. There were two studies. I give the references here, and you can find them in the paper if you want to look up the details, where they, uh, they tried to measure father, sons, or in this case, this initial study, Xu et al. 2009. They had two Chinese men of known genealogical relationship. They had a common ancestor in the 1800s. They got the Y chromosomes of the two men, counted the number of differences, and translated this to a per-generation mutation rate. And the rate right here, these are, these are numbers that are not, not necessarily comprehensible. The point is they got a, a slow rate of mutation that fit evolution. What they did, though, was use low-quality data. The, the technical term is coverage, which we can get into if people want to get into the technical data behind it. It's well-established in the secular literature that low-quality, low-coverage will miss DNA differences. Another study from 2015 using about... Uh, I think it was 274 Icelandic pedigrees and there were 750 or so Icelandic men where, yes, we have this common ancestor in the 1700s or whatever the number is. Iceland is not a very large country in terms of population size, fairly detailed genealogical records, great place to do this kind of study. Once again, though, they used low quality, low coverage sampling and they got, once again, a slow mutation rate. These two studies are the ones that I'm, I'm saying point towards a recent origin for humanity. It's one of the many lines of evidence pointing towards, I would argue, a recent time scale. This study was the one where they had about uh, 31 either father-son pairs or brother-brother pairs. They had high coverage, aka high quality DNA sequence, and they found a rate that was 10 times faster. Now, I say they found a rate that was 10 times faster. This is the paper where they literally say in the methods, we found a rate that was too high, so we created a filter to pull out data that didn't match evolution. And I'm surprised they actually said that. <laughs> okay. Herman Mays' comment is about this paper. And this paper was uh, a study where it's exclusively focused on measuring mutation rates. It's not just the Y chromosome. This was 50 Danish trios, father, mother, offspring. And the primary focus of the paper is the rate at which uh, DNA changes in, in the in the 99% of our DNA that we get from both parents. And they were meticulous in their methods. Again, it's it's high quality, high coverage. They, they show graphs where the rate of the, the father passing on mutations is higher than the rate of the mother with older fathers, more mutations than younger fathers. Anyway, just almost no stone unturned. That's my point. It's, 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 it's explicitly a mutation rate study. They look with excruciating detail at the DNA inherited from both parents. They look at different types of DNA mutations. There's single letter changes. There are chunks of DNA that change where, let's say the DNA is copied and, and for whatever reason, the, the cellular machinery skips five letters. It's a deletion or it's an insertion. There's, there's these sorts of things that happen. Anyway, there's all sorts of DNA changes that occur. They look at these in, in great detail. They also say something about the Y chromosome. So they've just done this exhaustive analysis for 99% of our DNA. They look at the Y chromosome. They say, we looked at the chunk changes, small insertions or deletions, indels is what they're called. They give a rate for that, but silent on the single letter change for the Y chromosome, which is what these studies have been looking at. That's the main focus of almost all Y chromosome studies when you look at human history. The number of single letter differences swamps every other type of difference in terms of the sheer number of them. So number one here, then this, this study of the Danish trios, there was about, I think, uh, 17 father-son pairs in the 50 families. They don't say a word about the single letter change, which was this mysterious omission from the paper. Now, I'm reporting a rate here because they published a family tree based on the Y chromosomes with a scale bar. And so from that figure itself, you can extract from those data a mutation rate. So what Herman Mays did then, so he, of course, recognizes this is way too fast revolution. He emails the authors 
says, hey, these creationists are using your data to argue for a young Earth timescale. And first of all, Herman Mays won't share the details of their entire exchange. Number two, the authors, he admits, confirm, yes, indeed, there are 17 father-son pairs, and I found them. Thirdly, the authors say, we think that this is due to sequencing error. Now, if anyone's ever done science, anyone's tried to publish a scientific paper, I mean, this is science 101. Nobody cares what anyone's opinion is. I mean, I had a colleague in graduate school who would say, um, he was talking about how he reads scientific papers. And pretty much every single scientific paper has four sections. Introduction, so setting up the question they're trying to solve. Materials and methods, which they say, here's, here, you know, here's the lot number of the kit that we use to isolate the DNA, and here's the methodology so anyone can reproduce it. Then they have the results section, and then they have a discussion. And so he mostly seriously said to me, he says, the only thing I read in papers is the materials and methods. He said, materials and methods is what the people did. Results is what they want you to think they found. And discussion is unvarnished, rampant speculation, which he thought was worthless. So when people do science, if you look at scientific studies, all that matters is the data. Nobody cares what you think about it. It's an opinion. You can publish an opinion piece, but there's a big old banner that says opinion when you publish it. It's the data that matters. So number one, again, in the original paper, it's odd that some of the key data was left out. It slips through in one of their figures, and that's what I used to extract this number. Number two, Herman Mays asks them, what do you make of this? This is their second chance to simply publish the data. And they don't. They give apparently whatever. We don't know all that they said because Herman Mays won't share the extent of the email, just private correspondence. They simply say, we think it's sequencing errors. And number three then, Herman Mays apparently thinks this is sufficient, as if scientific debates are adjudicated by what's by what someone says. That's pseudoscience, and he knows it. That's not how you adjudicate debates. Now, I can tell you, so, so here we are. We're, we've gone through two rounds of Moretti et al. not publishing the data. What are they hiding? I can tell you we have independent lines of evidence to be able to test this. There's multiple independent lines of evidence that I go through in the book and in my papers that show this mutation rate to be true. So, the answer to the question, Herman May says these are sequencing errors. His claim is based on someone's opinion. It's pseudoscience. Instead of actually testing, so number one, they could, they could resolve this by releasing the raw data, but they haven't. Number two, he could do an experiment to try to evaluate this, which he doesn't. Number three, I have done multiple experiments to resolve this directly, in, or I should say indirectly. There's, there's all sorts of ways you can evaluate the actual rate of change, which I've done in subsequent papers and in this book. And really one way to evaluate it is to look for the signatures of human history all throughout our DNA. You can see it in the Y chromosome based family tree. There's an echo of Noah and on and on the, the lines of evidence go. It's a really remarkable case study in how the leading critics of creation science respond to a large body of data. They don't engage the testable predictions. I've, I've given ways for people to, to falsify what I'm doing. There's predictions I make that you can go out and test and say, hey, your predictions didn't come true. It's wrong. Instead, they're using these, by their own definition, pseudoscientific methods to try to undermine it. And again, these are the leading voices in opposition, which I think is remarkable. They're basically doing what they've accused creationists of doing, relying on authority, saying certain, th certain things can't be questioned, not doing experiments, not looking for chinks in the established armor. There's another quote I can add here, too, because he published some, some additional correspondence with them. One of the other things the author says is, well, take a look at some of the other studies out there and see. I, I don't think you can find evidence from the other studies out there that would support this fast rate of mutation. One of the study, some of the studies that they cite include this low quality study, also this study where they literally filtered out data in opposition. So even these own authors don't seem to be familiar with the Y chromosome mutation rate literature or the circularity built into some of these measurements. So he's asking the authors. They don't even seem to know what's going on in the field, which is remarkable to me. And uh, they don't publish the data. That would be the simplest way to resolve this debate. Just give it to us in a transparent way so we can all see it. And they've had two chances to do it and they haven't. So yeah. there's my long-winded answer. And uh, I probably actually gave most of what I was going to put in the video, but there you go. Yeah.